standard, but then we look on over to RRQ and Kira, they've got some interesting synergies amongst the heroes to kind of get, get by. Well, having that Angela, I would say that it's a really good pick in the mid lane, okay, but we haven't seen her effective yet, unless for that one game that I always like hate myself for, for remembering that Angela <laughs> at some point could have got a Maniac and the M5, but um, the damage output, Mm, speaking of RRQ, Akira, I think they have the go they have the, all the damage they need, all the types of it, the, the physical damage and also the magical damage. On the other side, I would say that Team Fireflux have crowd control and also they have early and potential defense in the late game. With that being said, with all the combinations that we are seeing for Fireflux and Purity, is it going to be enough? to take it to the next level against RRQ Akira. Let's jump into the Land of Dawn and find out to settle this debate once and for all in our very first match in this best of three series. Welcome to the Land of Dawn. We have Fireflux Esports on the blue side up against RRQ Akira on the red side. Starting things off, I can already see Louise trying to slow TNZ down a little bit. Apex 47 is there. But it looks like they're not going to commit just yet. Louis is just trying to slow things down and be like, hey, guy, we can take our time. We got all day. We're just the second series of the day. We don't need to be that fast. Mm -hmm. Attacking early on in the in this, let's say, stage. Oh, Both no. teams, if uh, someone were... Uh, what happened? What did they make? Apex. Do yeah. it to uh, it. Reset. <laughs> Reset it. Reset it. Evil. Okay, no. Evil desk. Evil desk. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's what you expect from Tigger Real, right? I mean, look at the emblems. Like, he's built to do so as well. He's got Wilderness Blessing, and as well as the agility, he's got the movement speed to kind of stay ahead of the game. But look, we have seen... We have seen... I, I actually remember Zorn was the one who did that. He lost his uh, flicker earlier on as a... If I'm not mistaken, as a, a, grok. a grok. Yeah. yeah. So if the same thing happened with Louise here, he will lose his life more than one time. And at this time, oh, yeah. electrifying piece. I mean, to be fair, even though Zorn died a lot, the team still won. That, uh, right? Oh, yeah. Hey, still won. That's true. That's but, true. But I mean that if Minotaur lost his flicker, mm -hmm. he will be punished to away. He will be so squishy by the mid game. Well, let's see, right? We've seen both angles before. All We've right. seen him lose his flicker early on, and then afterwards, become really, really squishy. But we've also seen the opposite where we've seen him play a more counter-engaged objective-based type game where we're waiting for the opponents to come at us. And considering that Apex is playing Tikrio, the onus is on him to kind of wait it out. Whoever holds the ult the longest generally has an advantage. Oh. Takashi understanding that the gank is coming, making sure that he stays safe because this Yuzong is going to be very important in this sort of fight. Yeah, Rosa already stole his... Yeah, he did He did steal the Minotaur, right? I didn't yep, yep. Yeah, he the did Minotaur steal free. He will use it even before the Minotaur. That's funny. Oh, <laughs> that was so good. Forcing that Retri out, making sure that, yeah, there's no way a, a Turtle Contest is going to come by. It's his presence, the presence of the Tigreal, knowing that he wants to reset you. Do you imagine the disaster that Team RQ Akira are going to face if they saw a penalty zone with the stolen Minotaur ult and also the Tigreal? Can you imagine that situation? Oh, that's oh. going to be super devastating. Speaking of which, uh, Takashi and Alien are just 1v1 each other. And uh, no, no, even no, Saigon no, no. is like, do, do you want my help, bro? And Takashi is like, Nah, fam, I'm good. Yeah, it's fine. And I think Alien won out on that trade. It did. I mean, he did commit the ultimate. He didn't get the Black Dragon form out of Takashi, but he is ahead in EXP. Takashi trading for a little too long ended up missing a minion down by when it was pushed into the turret as Fireflux were looking for. Oh, explosion oh. coming in from Apex 47. There's nowhere for Luis to go. Gets taken down. <laughs> no need to use that flicker anymore. Just die first blood. Oh no, no setup there. Can't really do much. Ah, uh, this is this is gonna be a little frustrating. No hole so far for the side of Fireflux Esports. Yep. Saigon, I kind of feel like he committed to that hard guard a little bit too early. Ghost of Lagusta wasn't in, in any real trouble there. Yeah, I think again. Way too early, down by bot side, a lot of focus there, but RRQ Akira, when are we expecting them to actually take the initiative against Fireflux Esports? Ah. Uh. King. I actually, I didn't think that we will see an assassin to assassin jungle here. I kind of lean towards seeing an utility here, even though I don't like it. Oh, was that steal? Yep, TNZ got the skill. And King tried to do a little bit onto Rosa as well as TNZ. At this point, Fireflux Esports, they're just 
in a way, baiting things out while taking what they want. Mm -hmm. Yep. It, it feels like RQ and Kira right now are a little too responsive to what Fireflux Esports is doing. And they're getting away with a lot, right? Yeah. That's why we are seeing this 2K lead start to develop for the side of Fireflux. And hopefully, they're able to extend it some more because proactive plays aren't exactly happening across the map just yet. And because of the delays and the forcing of King's Retribution, mm -hmm. it's making it tough to kind of set up the fight around the turtle, which is what RQ and Kira intended in the first place. Even though I wouldn't agree that much about the uh, counter, uh, so it was an idea in my head, not with you, uh, Gideon, but there, there was this wild idea in my head, like, RQ are the one responding, even though Fireflux are the one who are supposed to counter engage with the picks they have, but yet they are the ones who are making the first moves and they are the ones who are actually winning every trade. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, 2,400 gold lead, and I believe it's all just Fireflux taking the farm from RQ Akira. Now it looks like RQ Akira, they do want to contest for this turtle, but there's a lot of members from Fireflux here. Apex 47, oh, oh. Louis committing to the Minoan Free way too early. Takashi comes in with a Black Dragon form, same as Rosa. Goes for Luis. Luis having to use the flicker early on. Now Apex oh. 47, implosion! Hits onto the oh. tree. Rosa gets a kill, gets a double. Beautiful penalty zone coming in from Alien. Oh, dude, this this is hive mind tactics for the side of Firefly Esports, right? They were able to steal away the orange buff from RRQ Akira, even though King was on it initially, decided, you know what, I gotta leave. I gotta be by that turtle side for the rest of my team. And Fireflux, like the hive mind they are, just pull back, send out the appendages, steal away the camp, and rinse and repeat. The whole team moves as one as we jump into this instant replay brought to you by Kadia. Let's see together what happened and what went down for for both teams. Oh, look at Apex. Apex just knew the right angle to go in, and that's what I told you about. It's a nasty team fight. The air crowd control coming from the side of team uh, Fireflux can be devastating to a point that you cannot move and almost get paralyzed. Look at Sunshine's gold as well. He's 1k ahead. He's one item maybe ahead uh, from uh, Gusta La Gusta. Team RQ, early game losing the hard. I think it's gonna be so hard to bounce back, to be honest. Let's see how they're going to attempt it, right? 4.5k, six minutes into the game, the hive mind continues to take control over the map. And uh, even so, you would have imagined that at least with the Angela's heart guard and oh. big enablers for the side of RRQ Akira, they might have been able to get a trade back. But so far, nothing, right? Three to zero. Do you see that goal, the XB difference between Takashi and, uh, mm -hmm. and Tenzi? Mm -hmm. <laughs> it is, uh, oof. Even uh, King level 9, wow. TNT level 12, <laughs> not looking good. At this point, RQ Akira, the thing is, they have the tools to fight back. They just Ouch. don't find the opportunities. And now, Alien trying to 1v1 against King, and even King can't really do much against this Terizla. He had to bolt out of there. Yeah, that Black Dragon was just scouting the sky. Bot side tier 1, all tier 1s on both sides are destroyed. And, ah, look at that. The hive mind just invading as one for this purple buff. It's pretty important for TNZ, but honestly, it's just slowing them down. Look at that. Even Retribution's being committed to it. After this, during the analyst segment, we, we just have to see how much buff the RQ Cure actually accumulated. And now King goes for Sunshine, taking quite a lot of damage. Sunshine is all by himself, but... Huh. Personally for me, I might have just forced it, you know? Oh, Apex, look at him coming from a really good angle here. Yep, still... RQ Kira looks like they're hesitating a lot. They're yeah. not really being proactive at all. I don't know why they're so nervous, right? It, it looks like nothing's really going uh, going together with them, right? We're seeing these engages coming in from Luis. We're seeing these moments coming in from, like, King as well. But we don't see the backup. Like, where's Gusta mm. Lugusta? Is he in the right position? It feels like Sagan is being, un uh, is being utilized. But at the same time, where are the rest of the teammates to kind of solidify a way to bounce back into this game, to find the trades? Yeah, this is not the same RQ Akira we saw against Team Blacklist earlier on. Oh, wow, that damage. I got to hold my breath because that was almost a 1v1 kill. And Fireflux Esports, again, this entire game, it's just three kills. But Fireflux gets everything. They are 8,000 gold ahead. They're I'll choking them out. I would add upon that, it's also not free kills. It's free turrets as well. Yeah, yeah. free turrets as well. Coincidence? I think not because Fireflux, at this point of time, I would imagine that even if they don't, um, even if they don't, like, take... Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Louise. Goes for it, hit him free on the tree. They got sunshine. Sagan gets the kill. Takashi with the black dragon form. Looks like he's there to push people away. Now they're being proactive. 
Finally, finally. Okay, let's look at the items. Let's see whether there was something that made the difference here. And what I'm seeing is that at least two items have already been completed for Gusta La Gusta, and that's why it gave him a bit of confidence. But let's not forget that even for the side of King, right, he's got the G. Ooh. No, he's, oh, no. Oh, no. Okay. he's in trouble. He's in oh, trouble. No. Oh, oh, no. TNZ with the fracture gets the kill. Oh. Is that five? Five levels ahead almost? Yeah. Uh, four levels. Four levels. He's going to get five, yeah. especially if he clears up that top side, goes back and clears his bottom side jungle, and also takes that Lord. And this is, look at the damage dealt, right? As much as we would like to believe, oh, TNZ, he's doing everything. Rosa is actually uh, dub almost doubling his damage, 28,000 oh, yeah. to 19,000. The thing that doesn't make sense to me, and I actually need to, to ask about that because, of course, like not, none of us is perfect, but why? Why do I see the Nicholas of Durance always as a first pick for the, Valentina, for the Valentina, even though I think that she can use some other items to have damage outputs or cooldown or yeah. something? Uh, number one is definitely the Elegant Gem, just because every single time you level up, your HP gets topped off, your mana gets topped off, so you don't right. have to recall. And going up against a composition that has a Minotaur as well, well as an Angela, it kind of secures you that that first blood, that, 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 that first kill. Wouldn't you like? Oh wow! Yeah, wow, you can do things. That like was that. quick. Yeah. <laughs> and it's cheap. It's so cost efficient, yeah. right? Because let's compare it to people who last time, before we even started thinking about cost efficiency, it was about getting dominance ISIS for supports as quickly yeah. as possible, right? Yeah. Now, technically, at least while you are waiting for that item yeah. power spike to actually happen, people who actually get the farm can minimize the yeah. overall heal healing coming up from RQ Akira. Yep, and right now, Fireflux, they're just getting all of the holy defense coming in from the inhibitors, so. RQ Akira, 10,000 behind. They need a miracle here. They need to do what they did just now. Louise needs to catch three people with Minu and Fury. Yeah, it's going to be so hard, though. It's going to be so hard because looking at the other side, looking at the side of Team Fireflux, oh. They, oh, they are in. Oh, Louise oh. re-engages. Apex 47 still holding on. Um. And they baited it out. Whoa. Oh, but Whoa. from behind, King tries to get a kill, but TNZ out damages him. Gusta La Gusta gets a kill onto Apex 47. Good engages by both teams. Yeah, really good engages, actually. Fireflux, they layered that very, very well. They're like, Rosa. He had the flicker, knew that the Minoan Fury is going to get something out of RRQ with Kira, and once that trigger was pulled, RRQ bit onto the bait. They forgot about the penalty zone. They almost forgot that Tanzi has an inbuilt cleanse inside of an Apex. He tried his best. He ended up going down, but a two-for-one trade for a support, more than worth it, especially with two inhibitors, and honestly, Great. all the inhibitors into the hands of Fire Flux and Fury. 13k gold lead, the biggest one we've seen 11 minutes going to 12 into this game. That's a huge loss for Team RRQ, losing all the Inhibitor oh turrets just with a matter. Oh, did you see that? It just like took him two hits to take the orange buff. 10.7k to 5.8. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's like, as I told you, it's the same as last game, Stitch State with uh, with Bebex. It's almost the double. Oh man, this is a hostage situation, man. Yeah. Oh boy. This is, yeah, yeah, I'm going to take the Earthquake Alarm because this is this is a disaster coming in yeah. for RRQ Akira. Hopefully everyone stays safe out there. Uh, we wish everyone all the best. And stay safe. Yeah, stay safe. Please, contact your loved ones if you can. Make sure you go to the authorities as soon as possible if you are in some trouble. Now, as we jump back into the game and hopefully on a lighter mood, 18 seconds until the next upcoming Lord, hopefully that's going to be what it takes for Fireflux Esports to close out this match. Uh, Team RQ actually needs some kind of a perfect approach. Let's look at the good things here. They do have some crowd control. So they, they do have uh, a zoning here. They can reach the back lines. The, the, the Ghost, the Ghost of La Ghost haven't died yet. So there are some assets for Team RQ. If they use them well, they might actually pull off one more defense. And by one more defense, they can buy time, and by buying more time, they can get back to the game. I Is mean, that a lord or, or a buff? Uh, that was yeah. fast. <laughs> yeah, that was fast. It's, oh, once again, Apex. Explosion. Oh. Going in, Luis finds three, but Luis gets taken down. He took Ooh. way too much damage. Alien goes in onto Gusta Lagusta. Takashi trying to zone everyone away. Alien is basically 1v3 oh. at this point. Takashi can't take the damage coming in from Rosa. It's just too much. It's just too much. It's checkmate, man. It's already checkmate. 4, and Fire Flux looking oh. to end it. Flickers forward, Rosa doesn't care at this point, and King gets taken down by TNZ. Rosa finally goes down to Gusta La Gusta, but he's going to get taken down as well. Game one goes to Fireflux Esports. Oh, oh man, that was, 
That was difficult. That was really difficult to watch. I mean, so many of the win conditions just denied away from RRQ Akira on top of the fact that they were getting stat checked time and time again. Once again, Fireflux.